Hello guys, welcome back. Today we're going to discuss about light waves. Okay, so in this video, the topics that we will discuss today is about the law of reflection, the refraction and refractive index, the concept of total internal reflection and critical angle, and finally, where total internal reflection is being used in, in um, different industries. Now, first things first, the law of reflection states that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. What it means is that if your light ray is going to strike a plain flat surface, it is going the angle at which it is going to reflect will be the same. Okay, your eye is going to be equal to your angle of reflection. So the angle of incidence simply means the angle between the incident ray and the normal, this angle, and then the angle of reflection means the angle between the reflected ray and the normal. Students often tend to make mistakes by trying to measure the wrong angle such as this one which is totally wrong okay it should always be between your ray and where you where your normal is in exams please use to please learn to use a protractor to measure exactly what your angle of incidence and angle of refraction is going to be okay so in this case you should be measuring this angle and for this one you should be measuring this angle all right so let's do an example on the right side if your light ray is going to hit this plane, right? How is it going to be reflected? Now, first, what you're going to do is always draw a um, a normal line, okay? Which is, sorry, a normal line, correct, okay? So let's draw a normal line here. Why did I draw this here? Because your normal line should always be perpendicular to your plane, that's why, okay? So your normal line should always be perpendicular to the plane. Now. What you're going to do next is measure your angle of incidence okay so where is your angle of incidence going to be it is going to be here if you think like that it's wrong okay so your angle of incidence is this one okay because it is between the normal and your incident ray all right so let's say you measure this to be right 50 i is equals to 50 what you should do is measure the angle between um, your reflected ray starting from normal ray go down when you reach 50 you stop mark it come back and then you're going to draw your reflected ray here okay all right this is not exact but you get the idea okay learn to use a protractor please all right refraction so refraction is simply the change in direction of a ray or a wave passing from one medium to another and it's going to be caused by the change in speed, okay? Because why? In air, there's not much particles, so it will be very fast. But when it is in glass, there will be a lot of particles, so the speed of light will be slower in glass than air. And the refraction is going to cause the change in direction. So, let's talk about the, this thing first, okay? When tr you're traveling from a less dense to a denser medium, such as air is less dense and glass is denser, your light ray will be refracted towards the normal. When you're traveling from a denser to less dense medium, light ray is refracted away from the normal. So let's see, right? Diamond to glass. Diamond is a lot more denser than your glass. So when you're traveling from denser to less dense, it will be refracted away from the normal okay this will be towards this will be away from the normal all right let's try the last one it is traveling from water to air okay so it will be from a denser medium to less dense medium so your refracted wave will be away from the normal all right so in exams not in exams okay sorry so when you're trying to practice yourself right forget about where is like air glass diamond glass air water okay they can give you anything that they would like to but the information that you need to like properly put it into your head is this two sentence when you're traveling from less dense to denser light ray is refracted towards the normal when you're traveling from a denser to less dense medium 
the light ray is refracted away from the normal. That is the concept that you should be remembering, okay? But here's a special case. When your light ray hits the plane at 90 degrees, when your angle of incidence is 90 degrees, it is not going to be bending. There, will, there won't be any refraction. It will go straight into your mediums, okay? When your angle of incidence is 90 degrees. Now, refractive index is measuring how much your material can refract. For example, when the same light ray, right, when your angle of incidence is 60 here and 60 here, when it is passing through glass, it is refracted by 34.5. When it is passing through water, it is refracted by 40.6 degree. Okay? So let's try to calculate the refractive index by using the formula, okay? This is the formula for refractive index. So for class, it would be N is equals to sine 60 by sine 34.5. You would get around, let's do it in calculator, sine 60 divided by sine 34.5. You get 1.52, okay? All right, for water, it would be sine 60 by sine 40.6. So by right, it should be less, right? So let's try to see if it is less or not. 40.6. It is about 1.33, okay? So the refractive index for glass is higher than your refractive index for water, meaning that glass is denser than water and that glass can refract the light more than the water, okay? So that is the measure of refractive index. Now, Let's talk about another thing, which is called total internal reflection. Okay, this is the slightly difficult concept in this chapter. So first things first, you have your angle of incidence, and of course your light ray will be refracted. Since this is from less dense to denser medium, it will be refracted towards the normal. Okay, so this will be your R. But imagine it, okay? When your angle of incidence is increasing, your angle of refraction will always be also be increasing. Now, when your angle of incidence is increasing to a certain point, when it keeps increasing, right? And your refractive rate increase, 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 and at one point, it will be at 90 degrees. When it is at 90 degrees, which is your angle of refraction, your angle of incidence is at a special angle, which we call the critical angle. So at the critical angle, the refracted ray is running along the boundary. But then again, if you increase your angle of incidence furthermore, right? Which means that your eye has now become greater than your critical angle, the ray will be undergoing something called total internal reflection. At this point, there will be no refraction. It won't be refracting anymore, okay? So it will only be totally reflected. At which angle? At the same angle like this. Alright, so what we call is the light is internally reflected, which we call a total internal reflection. So total ref internal reflection can only happen at certain scenarios, and you should remember them, which means which is your angle of incidence has to be larger than your critical angle, and the light rays are traveled from a denser medium to a less dense medium. The relationship between critical angle and refractive index is sine c is equals to 1 over n. We will do some um, calculation practice in the practice video, okay? So you should see here in this example. So by looking at this, right, you can safely assume that this is your angle of incidence this is your angle of reflection. You can, from this, since it is going um, total internal reflection, you do not see any ray being refracted here, right? You don't see it, okay? It's being totally internally refracted, okay? So your I is going to be equals to R. You should also know that your angle of incidence is way greater than your reflected, uh, sorry, your critical angle. Alright, so let's sum up what is reflection, refraction, and total internal reflection. So you should know that reflection and refraction can take place at the same time, which 
is meant by if it is traveling from less dense to denser it will be refracted away sorry towards the normal and you should also know that some of it will be reflected at the same time okay so this is a possible scenario all right but for total internal ref reflection right it only happens when um, the angle of incidence is greater than your critical angle okay so first things first it is from water to air so it would be like this so when okay it would be like this and when your angle of refraction become sorry I need to draw this better all right so when your angle of refraction become 90 degree your refracted ray will be running along the boundary right and when you further increase your angle of incidence it will be internally reflected this only happens when the light when the angle of incidence is greater than your critical angle and when light is traveling from a denser to less dense medium okay so you do not need to actually put this here all right, we can delete this. All right, so this is the two um, requirements for you to have total internal reflection. It is commonly asked in exams as well, okay? All right, so these are some of the examples that uh, the Pearson at Excel uses for total internal reflection. Okay, so pause the video and try to read this for a second. Okay, so it is used mainly in four places, which is prismatic periscope, right? In prismatic periscope, the total internal reflection concept is used okay, to reflect the light from the objects. For example, if we say there is an object we want to see here and there is a wall here. Okay, so we can use this. Sorry, give me a second. Okay, so um, we can bend the light over the wall that we have, right? And it is going to undergo reflection and come into our eyes okay and it will produce brighter and clearer images than our normal mirrors because it's using prisms and it's also used in bicycles and car reflectors which makes it safe for bicycle um, bicycle riders okay and vehicles so how it happens is that the light which is going to enter the prism here is going to be reflected twice and the light is going to go back to the original position so that the car driver behind the um, cyclist can see the cyclist very well. Okay, so it will be internally reflected twice and goes back in the same direction the light originally come from. For binoculars, we are going to apply two prisons here. Okay, so each side of the prison, okay, is going to walk like this. So each side of the binocular will contain two prisms and it's going to perform internal reflection as well. So without having these prisms, right, our binoculars will be super freaking long. Okay. Just like we would have for uh, telescopes for watching stars. Okay. But for binoculars, we don't need it because we can use um, two prisms to internally reflect them. And one final important use for total internal reflection is the optical fibers okay they are used in medical instrument and telecommunication fibers which i'll explain now all right so optical fiber right what is it essentially it is simply a thin piece of a very thin piece of fiber around the diameter of your hair okay and it consists two different types of glass so the outer glass right the external glass is very low um, refractive glass and the center is made of very high um, refractive index glass. Reason why is because we do not want any rays to be escaping outwards. Okay, that's why we're using a high refractive index glass and surrounded by low refractive index glass. So in the optical fiber, the total internal reflection will always be achieved. Okay, why is it that? It's because the angle of incidence, right? which is going to enter our optical fiber. Since the diameter of the optical fiber is very, very thin, okay, it will always be greater than the critical angle. Your eye is always going to be greater than your critical angle inside the optical fiber because the optical fiber, as I mentioned before, is very, very thin. 
and that's how total internal reflection is achieved so whether you are sending information or light right it will be totally internally reflected all the time okay until the other end so the place where optical fibers are being used is first thing number one is endoscope it's in used in medical industries very widely now so the doctors can make keyhole surgeries okay so instead of trying to cut your patient very cut your patient open right what we can do is cut a very tiny hole and insert the optical fiber inside here to see the insights okay so this process is going to be less stressful for patients to recover so instead of having to recover from your um, very large surgery hole now you can only recover from a tiny hole and telecommunications okay so modern telecommunication systems we're using optical fibers i'm sure that your internet or your phone lines are all optical fibers now okay and we used to use copper wires but um, it it uses a lot of energy because of heat and all that stuff okay so that's why we don't use it uh, anymore so we're now using optical fibers how it essentially works is that the electrical signals which comes from our telephones or laptops are converted into light energy and then they're produced by tiny lasers okay and this information will go to the other end of the optical fiber in the form of small buzzes like signals okay and we're going to have another person on the other hand who have a, let's say an earpiece this is going to be your receiver all right so the receiver is going to change the pulses into electrical signals and you'll be able to hear voice and data on the other side but you do not need to know exactly how to explain this just know that total internal reflection optical fibers is used in endoscope and telecommunications all right so that is all for today's video and i'll see you in the next one where we will do some practices on calculation problems make sure you watch the next video as well all right, bye-bye.